Okay. Uh, good morning to all, and welcome again to this YouTube channel, where we where we will discuss once again uh, the topic about the prayer. So interceding with people, and this is the best uh, measure for a person's uh, care to someone else because uh, you are uh, bridging the heavens uh, guidance and help to another person so meaning intervening or praying for someone else is one of the greatest thing we can offer to a person we love and we care for so as we begin our study uh, Let's have a short word of prayer. Lord, thank you, Lord, for once again this study, and may you help us to understand your will. Forgive our sins, and may your Holy Spirit abide in us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, so our topic for this time, So prayer, power, uh, interceding for others. So it says here, the word of God encourages us to pray without ceasing. Yes, in First Thessalonians five seventeen, in Paul's description of the Christian's armor, he has stated that we should pray always and ask the Ephesians to pray for him. So we can read that in Ephesians 6, 18 to 19. Where also we can read here the, uh, uh, what do you call the armor? It is uh, one of our armor to fight the devil. Ephesians uh, 6, 1, uh, 18 here. It says here, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. You see? Uh, if we pray for someone else, especially for those who are involved in mission, uh, we are helping them. It says here, prayer is especially powerful when used to intercede for others, either believers or not. So let's remember a person who is interceding for someone else. Uh, we have many examples. We can have Samuel who, who intercedes for the King Saul. So in that way, we foster a loving uh, kindness to someone else. So this uh, week, we will up, we'll discuss about um, praying in conflict praying for specific people, praying for other believers. Okay, here. Uh, we can read here in Ephesians 6.12. It says here, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. This is our enemies. It's not flesh and blood. We live in a conflict with cosmic extent, a conflict between good and evil, between Christ and Satan. Every person is serving in one side, and most people are repairing. 
there's no compulsory military service in Christ's side. He does not force anyone to follow him. Follow him. He does not intervene if you don't allow him. Intercessory prayer is the way we let God intervene in the lives of, of those we pray for. So, uh, yep, uh, we can read our memory verse in James 5 verse 16. See here. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So the prayer of a righteous person is great in God's eyes. So uh, let's pray for those who are suffering from sickness. And in that way, we can, uh, we can help uh, others also to live a life of uh, goodness. And yeah, in that uh, way, we can help those people. God honors our choice to pray for them and works even more powerfully in their behalf. So, yeah, it's very clear. Uh, when you pray for someone else, you are truly blessed. And the person is also blessed. Praying for specific people. You can read here in Luke 22, 31, uh, 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may save you as weak, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. So this is the story of uh, Peter uh, saying to Jesus, Lord, uh, when they will, there is, there is the time that they will arrest you. Uh, even these disciples, they will uh, live from you. But me, uh, I will lay my life to die for you. And this answer of Christ, uh, yeah, I, he, I want to pray for you because Satan wants to see you as weak. And that is a very caring words from God. And we should follow it because uh, Jesus predicted uh, the fate of uh, or the destiny of uh, Peter that he would neglect him or he would become, he would uh, neglect him as his companion and as his uh, personal uh, friend. He neglected uh, Christ three times. So sometimes we have that condition also that uh, our faith is great, but uh, sometimes we become isolated and as if we do not need the help of others but actually we need each one of us we need the prayer of every person so when you are listening or uh, uh, watching this video please pray all also for this uh, ministry that we are working uh, the last generation see our goal here is to hasten the lord's coming and to to wait for the Lord's coming because we wanted to see Christ face to face as our personal Savior and we wanted that. And I hope that you pray for us, and you support this uh, goal of our life. Yeah, that is uh, my life before when I was in college to, uh, uh, because I, I'm already uh, what do you call that? Uh, suffering in this world. And I saw many, many people are suffering in this world. Uh, that's, that's our goal. And when I wrote and I read the Bible, that we have the possibility to, be, to not experience this suffering anymore. Uh, I have, uh, 
I have done that by God's grace. And yeah, as you can see now here, it's the pandemic, the, the, the unity that this Babylon is doing all around the world and this prophecy are fulfilling. It, uh, it is slowly answer my prayer and my, our goal. Now, we cannot finish this work unless God will help. And we need the prayer of Christ uh, to Peter, St. Paul, and we need also to pray for our brethren. So Jesus was a man of prayer during his, his stay on earth. The harder the conflict, the more time he devoted to prayer. Holy Christ, when he was here, he would pray in the morning and he is very uh, he, very uh, devoted <laughs> compared to us that we are very tired when waking up uh, during morning. Actually, I, I experienced uh, praying for almost three hours uh, every day. Yeah, it's very really if you, if you don't know what to pray, uh, it's the time it's become boring. But as for God's help, uh, that he will give you the prayer. I know what the prayer is here is Jem Castor. Jem Castor was uh, a very devoted person. And when he prayed, he prayed uh, that he, God will provide for him. And he had many experience for that. He traveled. Uh, U.S. and yeah, in God's providence. And he relied mostly on prayers and not to his own strength. Uh, here, he did not rely on his own strength to overcome the host of evil. He always depended on the strength of the omnipotent through prayer. You see, our, our real enemies here are unseen. And if we fight, we sin uh, weapon, we will be defeated. But when we, uh, when we fight with our uh, unseen weapon, that's the time that devil will crumble. He left an example of praying for a specific people as he did for Peter. Jesus knew that Peter was not aware he needed help on that night. Therefore, Jesus interceded on his behalf. God encourages us to bring specific people to his throne and leave them on his hands. We must persist until we see the result. Remember that Jesus is also interceding for each one of us right now. You see, Jesus is in the most, uh, most holy place in the sanctuary, interceding on our behalf, hearing our prayer and petitioning to God that our forgiveness, our praises are accepted in his throne and our supplications are heard. <clears throat> Here, praying for others, believers. I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So, so you see, Paul used to pray for others, believers. What he did what did he ask for? Okay, let's read in Ephesians 1 verse 17 to 23. <laughs> okay, it says here uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand and in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and ascended over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, fills all in all. 
see Paul is not uh, wary in praying for these efficient believers. That because the reason here, verse 17, that God may give them wisdom, that they may know God better, that they may know the hope of His calling, that they may know the glorious inheritance to come, that they may know God's power. So it's it's uh, really the prayer of uh, Paul is to, that the believers may have a better relationship with Christ. It's that sometimes when we pray for some uh, one else, we pray for for maybe Lord they they, they can have this they, they can reach their goals, become uh, they have more money, more wealth, more popular, they can graduate like that. But our prayers should have this. They they must have a greater relationship with Christ and God that they may know him. You see? Paul also used to thank for the spiritual growth of his brothers and sisters as in his prayer in Philippians 1, 8 to 11. He prayed for them to continue their progress. We should pray for brothers and sisters as Paul did so they may be strengthened and encouraged in their Christian journey. So, yeah, let's remove hate in every one of us. Let's help one another. So it says here, God hears our prayers. Do you believe so? Yeah, I believe. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for on the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Okay. Uh, Daniel was worried about the situation of those who had returned from Babylon to Jerusalem. Uh, it looked like his prayer was not being answered after so many days. The situation was not changing at all. You see, uh, uh, Daniel is praying. If you can read uh, the prayer of Daniel in hmm, that's chapter 9 when he prayed for his people, their sins. And you see, God, uh, he saw in a vision that the king of Persia, this king of Persia was no other else pertaining to Satan. And then uh, this uh, Michael, who is Michael? Who, Michael is, uh, means who is like God, and that pertains to uh, Jesus Christ who stands in the last days in Daniel 12, 1, who fight also with the body of Moses and with Satan. You can read that in Jude 1, 9. And uh, because God is the one who is fighting for us when Satan is accusing us from our sins, God sent a vision to the distraught prophet in the most appropriate moment. He assured Daniel that his prayers had been listened since the first one. God had been working in other aspects of the battle before answering Daniel's prayer. He listens to every intercessory prayer, although we may have to wait his answer. So it's very clear that God hears our intercessory prayer. How to pray? As for me, it says in 1 Samuel 12, 23, I will certainly not sin against the Lord by ending my uh, prayers for you. So this, our prayers must be unceasing or uh, persistent. You see, uh, if, because we are wary of praying for something else, we, we forget that. Our intercessory prayers sorry, should be fervent, sincere, and specific. So when we pray, we must, uh, we must be specific, not too general. Example, 
call paid for specific people, his collaborators, and specific churches like the Ephesus or Philippi. He also asked the church to pray for his liberation or for his preaching to be strengthened. We can read that in Philippians 1 verse 19. Philippians 1 verse 19. says here, For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out my deliverance. So, we heard that about prayer. Also in Colossians 4 verse 3. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison. So as you can see, this prayer, that is solid prayer, are very needed in this society. Or how can we advance the gospel of God? You see, we should pray for the ministry. We should pray for those we know have met have not met their Savior. You can read that in John 17, verse 20. Uh, it says here, I do not ask for this only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Okay? So God is asking all, also for those who have not yet known their Saviors. Also, God is asking for the believers to be strengthened. Ephesians uh, 3, verse 14 to 16. It says here, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. So, Paul is not uh, stopping praying for all the people that they may be strengthened. Also, uh, uh, John is uh, praying that forgiveness must get might be extended to people. You can read that in 1 John 5, verse 16. That's it. What does it say? If anyone sees his brother committing a sin not leading to death, he shall ask and God will give him life. So those who commit sins that do not lead to death, uh, they sin that leads to death. I do not say that one should pray for that. Okay, we should pray for those people uh, not living to death. For the protection of those going through hard times. See, uh, we have now pandemic 19. Are we praying for those people who are affected? For those family who are bereaved from their loved ones? We should pray for them to be healed. Do not be selfish. Says, when he really realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, uh, where many were gathered together and were praying. So we have the story here. Uh, so we have the story of here, I think Peter were uh, were being uh, uh, prison so people are praying for Peter so we pray for those people when we pray for others we become a channel of God's blessing to them so through us through the righteous or uh, the prayer of a righteous person work so much so God hears them and we become a channel of blessings. So 
says here in one of the writings of all prophetess. What does intercession comprehend? It is the golden chain which binds the men to the throne of the infinite God, the human agent whom Christ has died to save in fortunes, the throne of God, and his petition is taken up by Jesus, who has purchased him with his own life. Our great high priest places his righteousness on the side of the sincere suppliant, and the prayer of Christ blends with that of human uh, petitioner. So this is a golden chain. You see a golden chain? Uh, you see a motor? There is a chain on that. So there is a big chain and a small chain. So it represents Christ and the man. And if, if we intercede for others, we'll be, we will become the channel. We become the chain for them to connect. So you, you see that the needs of that person you supply by praying to him and we become a channel. <clears throat> So, because they are purchased with his own blood, it's also here in testimonies for the church. Begin to pray for souls, come near to Christ, close to his leading side. Let a meek and quiet spirit adorn your lives, and let your earnest, broken, humble petitions send to him for wisdom that you may have success in saving not only your own soul, but the souls of others. So uh, that is uh, the advice. Begin to pray for souls. Because if we did not yet start praying for others, we may lose some blessings. People are dying every day. Thousands of thousands are dying from spiritual, from sickness, from physical and we need something to do, to pray for them. Because uh, the life of a human being is more precious than the whole world combined. Thank you and God bless. And let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Forgive our sins if we have committed to thee. Let our hearts become sincere and be humble on your side. We pray for everyone else, for those suffering from sickness, and for those people who are not known yet. Also, we pray for those who are struggling from uh, this world, financial, physical, and social and mental torture and suffering. Lord, help us and uh, forgive our sins and thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Christ's name, all we pray. Amen. So, once again, thank you and God bless. If you are new here, uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe and click the notification. God bless.